You know, national signing date certainly changed over the last few years, you know. Uh, by about 7.30, you'll wait on a few more, as we are too, but by about 7.30, it's over, you know, about 7.15. Uh, we didn't have any surprises uh, so far, and we're still waiting on one or two. Uh, but we signed 19 high school kids, uh, two transfers today, a pro kick, uh, Australian, and um, very, very excited about the class. We think we uh, addressed most of our needs. Um, the ones that we didn't, we'll, we still have some scholarships available to work through the portal uh, and, and get those things uh, handled. Um, I am excited about the two uh, portal uh, signees that we had today in Hazelwood and, and certainly Landon Jackson. Um, we signed 10 from the state of Arkansas. I thought it was as good a, you know, I was here before, obviously, three years, and then my third recruiting cycle, I guess, here. And I thought it was the best class of, of athletes uh, in the state of Arkansas. Uh, went up to Tennessee for a few, Texas for a couple. Georgia has been a, a strong ground for us, uh, signing four out of the state of Georgia. And then we pieced a few, uh, three other, well, Australia and South Carolina, Wisconsin. So, uh, thing I like about this class is is that we 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 had needs at O line, we had needs at wide receiver, um, defensive line. Uh, I don't think we're done quite yet at D line, linebacker, things of that nature. But I really thought that Coach Shear did a nice job of signing the three linebackers that he did. So, very excited about the class. Uh, excited that they're excited about being at the University of Arkansas. So with that, we'll I'll answer whatever y'all want to ask me. Coach, you signed four offensive linemen, um, two inside the state, one I guess you consider Memphis kind of an extension of the state. What do you think about that class, just those four guys individually, and it looks like you, you just keep getting bigger up front? Well, you, you have Chambly, um, whom I think has potential to be a, a, a great player, uh, has all the everything. Size, feet, all those things. And then I love Kudis. I mean, I do. I think he's – I can promise you I'd offered him, Chambly, this class. I did. I offered uh, Henderson when I was at Georgia. So there's not one kid in that we, we got right now that I wouldn't have offered when I was a line coach at Georgia. Amari and Harris moves, moves very well. Had a really good state championship game for a – for a huge uh, person, Eli Henderson. We've got him because we think he's a center guard. And then uh, Patrick Kudis is – I mean, I, he's he's got a really good high school coach. I think he's going to be ready. I think he'll play – you know, he got potential to play early in his career. And and uh, we started with Chambly and certainly a lot of talent there, a lot of length. He looks like what you're supposed to, and, I, and he's athletic like what you're supposed to. So I think that I thought Coach Kennedy did an outstanding job of coaching this year, and then recruiting. And that that that's that's part of your job description. You can't be a great coach and a terrible recruiter, and you can't be a good recruiter and a terrible coach. You have to be both, and that's what Coach Kennedy is. And he he proved it on the field and proved it in this signing class. The other most populated position group is wide receiver, and you got a commitment today from Samuel uh, Bakke, and uh, uh, of course, you know your transfer addition and all that. I mean, with with Burks moving on and some uncertainty at wide receiver, how important was that well, position you, group? I think Trey, if you look back at last year's class, I think we hit on all three of those guys. They're just young, but I think we hit on all three of those. I think they're all three going to be good players for us. If you look at our board, we, we don't have a lot of scholarship wide receivers that are playing ball for us that are going to come back next year. Uh, so, obviously, we went and, you know, uh, Coach Smith, you know, certainly was instrumental in Hazelwood. Uh, but then, you know, you have Bakke, McAdoo, and, and certainly Satagna. And, and uh, those guys, I think, are very talented. They're all a little bit different. Um, um, but we, we wanted to stay – as big as we possibly could in length, uh, so we could win one-on-one -on -one contested balls. But Satania was just so fast, and and to be honest with you, very physical for his size, and can win a one-on-one -on -one battle uh, uh, in high school. He was winning them uh, all the time. So 
that was a big class for us too. And again, Coach Guyton did a really good job with them. And then uh, Kenny Kenny getting Hazelwood was huge. Coach, you talked about recruiting has changed, but you signed 22 kids. About 80, 70 to 80 percent of those kids are coming in at midterm. That's that's a lot more than used to. I mean, used to it was one or two kids. Now it's 17, whatever it is. I mean, talk about that, getting them on campus. Just what an advantage that is for them and you. You know what I've learned as a coach is it's a lot about the board. You know, it's a lot about available scholarships, how many you have left, you know. And when, when you're sitting here looking at 17 to 19 coming in early, you have to have those amount of scholarships available, obviously. So – um, but the board, I, I'm enjoying that part of the job, you know, but you get a whole spring with somebody. I, I remember I had Andrew Thomas at Georgia and he got in in June and he started as, you know, some guys get it a little bit faster and he, he didn't have any really fallacies. He was strong and athletic and all those things, but you get a guy in spring ball, um, you have a chance. I mean, you have a chance to, to play and, um, Certainly the ones that are ready will we'll get ready, and the ones that aren't, well, hopefully we can get them on some type of special teams and, and help us through there. But I can remember, I don't know, I don't think it's too many years ago when you were setting, you know, if you got one, you got two, graduated, you know, at Christmas, uh, that it was kind of a big deal. And now I know it's at least 17. I'm, I'm not for sure the number. I've been really, really busy today. But I think it uh, – I think it's between 17 and 19, and and the number certainly could grow. You know, well, you you bring in 20 guys into your program in the spring, you're losing 20 some. Uh, you have a chance to continue to get better. Hey Sam, with with, with Hazelwood and Jackson, they obviously have previous experience. You know, at high level programs. Well, what do you expect each of them to bring to the table for you? And how big is it to get some experienced guys? Well, thank you. You're talking about two totally different guys. In other words, Hazelwood's played a lot. He's older, you know, played a lot of ball. Um, um, so he he would be a guy, but not the expectations, but they're just two different guys, you know. Hazelwood's played a whole lot of ball. Um, Landon's played some ball until he got, got hurt. Uh, but um, – we need help at both those positions, in my opinion. And uh, I don't know. There's probably guys out there that would disagree with me, but I think it, those two guys at their position are probably about as good as there is in the country in the portal uh, at defensive end and at wide receiver. And uh, very excited to get both of them because we're expecting them to help us immediately. Sam Okay said that seeing how you used Traylon Burks was one of the reasons that he decided to go with Arkansas. So what do you think that the year that Burks had, how did you think that influenced some of the young receivers that you signed today? I imagine a lot, you know, um, I think each and every one, obviously not every one of them is going to be the slot receiver. Um, but I think a lot, in other words, I think with Burks's numbers, I think that disproved that we're willing to throw the football. And I think these kids, and with KJ, we have somebody that can throw the football. I think those are two of the biggest things that kids look at is, do you have somebody that can get me the ball, and are you willing to throw it around? And just the numbers alone uh, this year on what, what Burks did, um, I think that's really, I do think that helped us, yes. Coach, you talked even just last year about wanting to have higher ranked recruiting classes and stuff. Yeah. And a lot of coaches will kind of shy away from talking about recruiting rankings and stuff. But various sites have you 18th, 13th, 11th. One has you 25th. And what are your thoughts right now on, you know, where, where your class is ranked um, by those different services? Well, I, you know, I feel like each year uh, we're getting a little bit better, you know, in our classes. Um, uh, we certainly – uh, aren't uh, happy with where we are, but but we're getting a little bit better. Um, I think we'll continue to move up and, and you know in those things. Uh, uh, we do, we want to be right on who we who we get. Um, we won't offer a kid a scholarship if we wouldn't take it. Um, uh, so uh, I, I'm proud of our staff. Uh, you know of our recruiting department. I thought Coach uh, Butler. Uh, did a good job, and, and along with Charlie and BTO and Callie and Maddie and those guys, they did a nice job of organizing everything. And and uh, 
I would always want to finish higher, you know, but we are. Each year we're getting a little bit better, a little bit better. Our team's getting a little bit better, a little bit better. Um, so as long as it's heading in that way, oh, there'll be some people who don't like it, but most people will. Coach, one one position that is not on this list is quarterback. Uh, was that something you decided early on, or are you still maybe looking for a quarterback to add for depth, or do you like your numbers at that spot? Well, we might be. I mean, we might be. Um, you know, everything's fluid in, you know, with the transfer portal and, uh, I mean, both ways, uh, out of here and in here, you know. And so uh, certainly that would be something that, uh, is always things we'd have to look at. We went made a decision not to not to sign a quarterback this year simply because we felt like we were on some really good ones in the 2023 class, and we felt like it would help us get them, uh, knowing that we had Malik and and certainly KJ and and we we got Coley, and Renfro's a fine. Uh, he's walked on. He walked on here, but he's a fine quarterback. So uh, we felt pretty secure uh, at the quarterback position that we might could. I don't know if it's a smart move or not. I guess time will tell. But I felt like we could because there's nobody immediately in front of a oh guy. Maybe you could, you know, with KJ going to be a junior. Maybe you could really sign a great one in the 2023 class. So that's why we did it. Coach, you had a few players enter the portal this morning, and by my count. That can't be the end of it, or, or you'll be over. How, how difficult is that numbers crunch when you're trying to balance a recruiting class, players entering the portal, and, and all of that stuff to stay under the 85 this year? Um, it's difficult, but for me to sit here and think that we're not going to have several guys go in the portal uh, between now and the bowl, and then after the bowl, I mean, I'm not really concerned about it, Trey. I'll, I lied to you a little bit there. I, I'm a little. I'm, I'm concerned about it. Well, there's a balance. Uh, but I'll bet you before we get get over with, we'll be under 85. You know what I mean? It's just it's free agency out there, and um, it's a it's a it's it's wild right now, and it's a, if I'm not starting, I'm transferring world, and I get it. I mean, I get it. Uh, that's the ones that are starting for you that hurt you. You know, really hurt you. Uh, you don't want to lose depth. I mean, at all. But um, I, I worry I, all the time. I mean, I do. I, I have the board. I have the numbers we need. All those type things. But I'm about positive it'll work itself out. I really think that. And and just the way you talk about free agency in that regard, and also there's some concern with. You know, some coaches, you know, talking about NILs and how it's affecting recruiting and, like, almost feels like the highest bidder, uh, you know, can get a recruit and stuff. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it's, I mean, let's face the facts. I mean, it's certainly going that way. I mean, I read the University of Texas had every offensive line guy on scholarship got X amount of dollars and, and uh, I mean, I'm not griping about it. I mean – but that's how it's going, and where it stops, nobody knows, you know. I'm not saying I'm not for the kids. I'm just saying that my mind's got to change a little bit in, in, in recruiting and, and NIL. And you're not supposed to use NIL for recruiting, but I'm saying if you've got your entire offensive line worth fifty to $150,000 a man, you probably become a little bit better recruiter, I'd imagine. Hey, Sam, talk about, you talked about you know the portals, uh, the portals swings both ways. I guess some names they, uh, Boyk and Towers, Hamilton, Jordan. Can you confirm that those guys are in the portal? Well, you wouldn't know about them if they weren't. So you got it off the portal. So yes, they're in the portal. I mean. okay. <laughs> and then you, you got it. Three linebackers, and we know you're hoping to get Bumper back, but you're definitely losing two of your top three. How, how do you feel about the linebackers? You got, I guess, Manny's obviously coming off an injury. Maybe what are your expectations for him? Um, you know, I like Poopal. I like Parker. Um, I'm 
I, it's no secret I'm trying like crazy to keep pool, you know. Um, I love this young uh, three linebackers that we signed. Um, we'll see if we feel like we need to go in the portal f for another guy. The portal, it's not like you're just going to go pick a guy, you know, oh, he's in the portal and you pick it. The guy's got to be a good player, and in my opinion, he has to have played in college. Uh, I think you can make big mistakes on he was a five-star in high school and he didn't go play over here and, and he hadn't played in a year or two, and then all of a sudden you're going to make him into something that they couldn't, mm, probably not going to work. So um, I like to sign guys that I've seen play on the field in, in, in a college game. And uh, so we, we may do that. But I, I think we definitely – Linebacker is one of our positions that obviously we lost some good ones. That uh, that is, that's concerning. We feel like we have the guys on campus that can take over and do that, but certainly that's an uh, unproven position overall right now. Coach, on the uh, portal deal, you, if you get down, if you there's seven, you can you know, if you lose get so, if you lose, do yeah. you have to take portal kids or can you take high school kids? And no, you can take high school as well. You can. It just gives you an extra scholarship. Okay. Hey, what they're trying to do is not deplete your roster down to 60 people if you have guys transfer and guys transfer for different reasons. They transfer they're not starting. They transfer because they'll never play. You know, they'll transfer because I'm not getting the ball enough. Whatever the reasons are being. And I don't think it's a – I don't really think it's a uh, picture of the way the programs ran. I just think, you know, it's it's a times right now to where if I'm not doing something right now, I'm – the system has allowed to – I'm going to go somewhere else, you know. Whether somewhere else is better or not, they're already gone. So it really doesn't – you know, it doesn't matter at that point. They've already left your program. Hey, uh, Jalen Catalan announced yesterday he was yeah, coming back. Yeah, there you go. So just <laughs> – Go Hawks. <laughs> just wanted to get your thoughts Stromberg on – Stromberg before that. Go Hawks. <laughs> just your thoughts on the, the, what went in his decision and what you think of it. Well, I, I, think, he, I think he made a great decision. Um, no, for him, uh, personally, I think it was a good decision as well. Uh, you know, certainly coming off the shoulder that he had last year, uh, he wasn't able to complete what was a fine season that started out. Um, so with him coming back, uh, it's a big, big thing for us. Uh, I think it will certainly help him. And uh, Ricky the same way. I think Ricky had contemplating – or, co excuse me, contemplated going out. Uh, I, I didn't think Ricky – I think he could make a team – I, I thought if he came back another year, got stronger, another year of playing, that he could really, really roll up the draft board. And uh, but I was just honest with both of them about where they where they were on the on the board, and uh, then let them decide what they wanted to do. And fortunately for us, they both decided to come back. Both of them were draftable, by the way. Coach, earlier I think you said that you were maybe looking possibly using the other spots for portal. I mean, are are the, the remaining spots you have, you think you're at 22 now and can go up to 28, I believe? 28. 28. And then – If if I lose this, you know, if seven get in the portal. So do you anticipate using portal guys or are you still maybe targeting some high school kids? Or how do you anticipate kind of filling up those spots? Well, we're recruiting high school kids um, still. Um, so we're, 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 we're trying to get the best available. But there are spots of need. I mean, that we have to say, we have to get one of these. We have to get one of those. And uh, so if we think the high school player is as good as anybody, we can go out and get in the portal, we're going high school. That's just my belief. Uh, but if we don't, then, you know, we'll go with a guy that's played somewhere else if once he gets in the portal. But, uh, no, I, you know, there's some really talented guys still out there uh, that we're trying to get, but if we if we don't, uh, then we'll go go to college. Yeah, you got Brown and Lewis as the DBs in this class. I wonder if you could speak to them just a little, and maybe you know, still active there. Y yeah, um, very physical, uh, both of them. You know, the, the thing I like 
when you watch film on Brown and Lewis is they both could be really good wide receivers. I mean, they're, they're, they've got really good ball skills, good speed. Um, both of them really good friends. That, that helps too, I, I think. Um, but both, both big and physical kids that I feel like are Arkansas, you know, tough. Um, not a lot of social media stuff. You know what I mean? Just, hey, I'm going to come to Arkansas. I'm going to earn my, earn my way, and people are going to like me because I'm tough and physical and good, good kids, you know. But, yeah, I like both of them a lot. I think they're really physical. Coach, I know if you're a first-year coach, then you don't like this early signing period mm, at all. Not but, at all. But you're in your third year, third class. Yeah. Um, I was curious what your thoughts are of it, being in the situation you're in. And do you think it's the best thing for coaches, for kids, for the sport to have the early period? Well, there's really an extra cycle, not for the new coach. But if you really look at it, you have a cycle of signing day and – I can remember a coach said when I first got here, he said, well, we should do something about this because there's no good players left anyway. And I'm thinking about it and I'm going, that's not true, no, but majority of your players are signing today, you know. Well, then when you go out in January, what are you doing? Well, you're going out and looking for 2023 20, kids. In the olden days, it was, I'm hanging on to my hat. Now it's 2020. So you really have two cycles of spring, in my opinion, now. I don't know about the calendar, where we should go with it. I, You know, I've been a head coach all of, you know, two years, so I'm not the one that should be the expert on it. I just know this, that I am an expert on early signing day, and you have no chance if you're a head coach at a program that has fired their coach because – the fired coach is not going to have anybody committed or very few when you get in there and you're trying to rally up a class of 20, 25 guys. And it's it's impossible. You're going to get them all in the second signing class, which we did two years ago. But, I mean, it's impossible. So I'm all for it now. But I've, I wasn't, you know. And, and to be honest with you, the guys that get these jobs after – the playoff weekends, I'm going, man. Danny Lanning, he'll 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 get a he's a great recruiter, great guy. He'll rally around and get a good class at Oregon. You know, some he'll keep some of them guys they had staying. But it's hard now. I mean it's hard. I don't know what you do about it. I'm curious also, not that this has impacted it at all in this class, but uh in, in state recruiting is always important and a lot of times schools will come, you know, from out of state and they'll offer a kid they haven't evaluated in your state yeah. and stuff. Try to put and the it doesn't really on mean you. Yeah. that much. How important is it in that case for you guys to make sure that you're out in the state evaluating guys and you know, just to make sure somebody doesn't kind of try yeah. to come up on It's under very you? important. And to be honest with you, this really – we've been in a state, but not like we need to be, in all honesty. And it's been because, you know, we didn't get to spring. And uh, so – this January, we're going to make a huge push in our in our state just to meet coaches and go around. And now you 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 know you had the two two and a half week window in there where you have to go see your guys you're getting ready to sign. You know what I mean? So I think I think the state um, will will show the state a little bit more than what we have now. How much we appreciate them whenever whenever the January period comes. Coach, is the uh, portal, is it really pretty much neutralized the junior college? I mean, really affected the junior college recruiting, and it just doesn't seem like you guys really look at that. I mean, JUCO I kids anymore. Isn't that crazy? Well, now, JUCO last year was, you know, late, you know, uh, most of them. Um, I think it's hurt two things, the portal. It's hurt high school recruiting, and it's hurt uh, – Junior college recruiting. I mean, it has, you know, so. You, but if you get a kid that's played two years, say, let's just say at Michigan or two years at, at junior college, you're going to probably, I mean, you judge the kid from Michigan a lot better, don't you think, or Tennessee well, or any I, school. I, 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 mean. would, I would relate it to if you play in the SEC versus you're playing in 
We played in the CSIC when I was at Pitt State, so let's use that one. Even though there was some fine players in that league. But if you, you got it, you're looking at a kid playing against Alabama and Arkansas and Georgia and whomever versus Missouri Western, Northwest Missouri State, and the great Pitt State Gorillas, you probably got a better evaluation if that makes sense. So you're 100% right. Coach, I had some success this class with guys like McAdoo flipping for Florida State, Isaiah from Oregon, and then also uh, Crook from Oklahoma State. What, what's the key whenever you're recruiting a guy that's already committed somewhere else? How, how do you get them to change their mind? And how, how did y'all go about like getting those guys to, to change their minds? Well, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm not positive how we got back in on Crook, but Satagna and McAdoo came back to us, you know, because we had recruited them. We had a good relationship. That's why you don't want to burn any bridges, you know. Uh, uh, but they came back to us, and, and both of them came back, you know, in that first run we made, you know, somewhere around in there. I think maybe, maybe McAdoo was a little earlier, but, you know, when we proved that they could be proud of the – Razorbacks, and we're nowhere where we need to be. I'm not saying that, but I think we're a lot better than we were two years ago, and uh, and that would that's that's helped our recruiting. And they came back to us to see that they could experience bowls, you know, and things of that nature, which they weren't quite able to do before. A couple more. Just uh, assistant coach, you've had such a good year. Um, do you have any concerns that you might have a couple peeled off, or was it? How's that looking? No, I don't. Yes, I always have concern. You know, uh, yes, uh, but no. Uh, I think we're in great shape. Uh, I have no no indication at whatsoever that we might lose anyone on our staff and. To put it out there, I don't want to lose anybody on the staff. Uh, so I'm sure the university will sit down and figure out what we can do for the, you know, to make sure that it doesn't happen. We've already started in a couple of guys. Uh, so, um, uh, but no, I don't want to lose anybody, and I have no in indication that we we're going to. All right, thanks, coach. Thanks, guys. Oh, everybody.